On December 18th, I'm going to defend my thesis on natural resource-based expert-led industrialization. And uh, I'm going to in particular present the findings of my research on the wine industries in Chile and Argentina. And in particular, I'm going to show how natural resources, such as wine, have become extremely knowledge intensive, extremely technologically sophisticated, and therefore can represent a platform for development. Contrary to what uh, many development theories argued in the 60s, 70s and 80s, uh, when they thought that natural resources were an impediment rather than an opportunity for industrialization and long-term development. So is the wine industry different from other natural resource sectors then? No, it's not. It's just emblematic. Uh, I chose wine because it's, it's an industry that's far ahead in a process that scholars have defined as a de decommodification, meaning that they, they, are, they, are, they are losing their characteristic of being homogenized, standardized, uh, low technology intensive. Now they are becoming increasingly differentiated, customized, specialized goods. They offer opportunity for export diversification and for increasing value added and export price per unit, which normally homogenized, standardized goods do not offer. So wine is at the head of this uh, trend, of this phenomenon, but now coffee, for example, is where wine was 10 years ago and now nobody's surprised anymore but until some time ago one would think that coffee was a completely a commodity, a completely standardized good but now the fact that it's associated to concepts like vintage plantation or denomination of origin or geographical indication is no surprise anymore and, and people start to think it's normal to pay $20 for a cup of Blue Mountain coffee. So wine started this process, coffee is following, cacao, tea and other natural resources are, are coming after and following the same path and the same trend. So I chose wine just because it was emblematic of this process. And does it represent a long-term platform for economic growth? Indeed, it may represent a long-term platform for economic growth, provided uh, countries master the technology and the knowledge that, that characterizes these products, products increasingly, namely uh, part of the knowledge and the technology can be imported and in the case of Argentina and Chile it was imported from FDI, uh, a lot of machinery and equipment uh, imports and uh, flying winemakers, tacit knowledge flows from abroad coming in but... Uh, was that mainly from Europe or also from South Africa? Mainly, mainly from Europe but flying winemakers for example were coming mainly from Australia and California which are the leading top new world producers. Uh, that, that this group of countries that have challenged the hegemony of the old world producers such as Italy, Spain and France based on innovation, based on new ideas, new knowledge, new technology, new, new marketing strategies. And quite surprisingly in this group we find all of a sudden developing countries such as Chile and Argentina but also as you said South Africa. So this for me was the interesting phenomenon in such a context is not obvious and, and uh, in my view, it deserved really deeper investigation and a closer look to understand what kind of phenomenon is that and are developing countries really um, mastering the technology and creating local tacit knowledge uh, or are they simply importing from abroad as some... You, you tend so homegrown knowledge. Yes, basically. exactly. Okay, so is this research useful or transferable to other developing countries? I mean, are we likely to see wine booms in the rest of Africa or even <laughs> Asia? Well, I mean, many countries are are developing countries are are wine producers are becoming wine exporters more than we normally tend to think. South mm -hmm. Africa is following, but then we have Lebanon, we have Morocco. Lebanon is 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 a, is a big producer, and. 
certainly China is a major actor, which is a large producer, but not a large exporter. So uh, it is transferable to developing countries, certainly for wine, but also for whatever uh, developing countries which decides to use natural resource, resources as, as, a, as a base, as a platform for development, so uh, that, that understands that, that the natural resources are, are bringing along the new techno-economic paradigm, that the new technological re uh, revolution will be around very likely, and that's what I argue around natural resources, but natural resources that are not raw commodities, but are very sophisticated, technological intensive products. Okay, and what about your future plans with this research? Where, where do you plan to take it? I, I plan to operationalize it, so hopefully I will be able in my work at the UN to, to implement projects for the creation of business linkages in natural resource based sector. That could be agricultural commodities, processing agricultural commodities, but also mineral-based products such as mining or oil, which are normally uh, considered enclave industries characterized by very low linkages. But we know that the potential for creating backward and forward linkages in developing countries is very high. And this is the way really for, the, for, for, for those economies to take full advantage of the extraction and then the processing of, of natural resources. Fulvia, thank you very much.